Hi everyone. I will be presenting today on the measurement of secondary traumatic stress. My name is Jessica Beret. I'm one of the instructors at Cumberland University in the nursing department. I'm currently working on my PhD in nursing right now at East Tennessee State where I'm in my second year of coursework. I have no disclosures to present. I am preparing these findings for submission in a, manus in a manuscript currently. Secondary traumatic stress, what is it? It is a phenomenon that heavily impacts the science and practice of nursing. Nurses are at risk of experiencing trauma, um, secondary trauma or indirect trauma as a result of caring for individuals who are experiencing trauma themselves. As a result of these interactions, nurses often develop what's called secondary traumatic stress, which is described as the negative psychological, cognitive and emotional effects of caring for people who have experienced trauma. Since COVID-19 developed, the prevalence of secondary traumatic stress has been found of in 45, excuse me, 47.5% of frontline healthcare workers. And this number is only expected to continue rising as secondary traumatic stress develops after having been exposed to patient suffering, which has been paramount over the last year secondary to COVID. So why should we care about it? Secondary traumatic stress is not just stress that we all experience. It brings with it real consequences. The most concerning consequence of secondary traumatic stress lies in the safety of patients who are being cared for by the nurse. One study by Wolf and colleagues found that nurses who were affected by secondary traumatic stress could not detect signs of patients' decompensations or patients becoming more sick, um, becoming more ill because they had become so task oriented that they weren't truly seeing their patients as people anymore. This is alarming. If nurses are unable to detect signs of patient deterioration, the nurses will not be able to intervene when a patient's life is threatened. Secondary traumatic stress can result in reduced cognitive functioning, including poor problem solving and decision-making skills, poor concentration, confusion, and even forgetfulness. Secondary traumatic stress has been associated with increasing burnout, emotion-focused coping, and distraction coping. Professionals experiencing secondary traumatic stress are believed to be at higher risk of making poor professional judgments, such as misdiagnosis, poor treatment planning, or even abuse of clients. Due to numbing behaviors related to secondary traumatic stress, Wolf and colleagues found that American emergency room nurses do not always detect signs of patients' behavioral escalations, which has an impact for the nurse's safety. Lastly, nurses reporting higher levels of secondary traumatic stress symptoms tend to have more work-related abs absenteeism and use of sick days, which impacts safe patient-to-nurse staffing ratios. For all of these reasons and more, it is crucial that secondary traumatic stress be further examined in order to preserve the nursing workforce and safety of patients. Given the alarming effects of secondary traumatic stress, we should also examine the prevalence of it. Unfortunately, most studies that examine secondary traumatic stress discuss its prevalence in specific populations of healthcare professionals, so it's difficult to gather an overall estimate of its prevalence in all types of nurses across different locations. However, from the existing literature, it appears that secondary traumatic stress is a common denominator among many nurses. It's been discovered that 64% of emergency nurses in Ireland meet the criteria for secondary traumatic stress, while 61% of those nurses address their symptoms with alcohol use, while 49% of neonatal intensive care unit or NICU nurses um, have moderate to severe levels of secondary traumatic stress. 94% of Jordanian emergency nurses experienced at least one symptom of secondary traumatic stress and more than half of them experienced moderate, excuse me, more than half of them experienced high to severe levels of secondary traumatic stress. These, these numbers will let us know that it is a common issue, a common experience among many nurses. Unfortunately, there are sometimes overlaps and mixed uses of secondary traumatic stress of secondary traumatic stress with related concepts. Secondary traumatic stress differs from post traumatic stress disorder or PTSD in that the presence of PTSD requires a primary exposure to trauma, 
PTSD is a disorder that develop that, that may develop after um, exposure to a stressful event or situation of an exceptionally life-threatening or catastrophic nature in which the exposed person is the primary person involved in the situation. Secondary traumatic stress differs from PTSD because, PT, because secondary traumatic stress refers to the emotional toll suffered by persons who have indirect exposure to trauma as part of their professional or volunteer caregiving duties. Secondary traumatic stress is also not burnout. Job burnout is a psychological syndrome that involves a prolonged response to chronic interpersonal stressors on the job and is comprised of three key features. Overwhelming exhaustion, feelings of cynicism and detachment from one's job, and a sense of effectiveness with a lack of accomplishment. Although secondary traumatic stress and burnout share some very similar negative aspects of caregiving duties, they differ in that burnout does not result from being exposed to another person's suffering like secondary traumatic stress does. Anyone in any type of job can experience job burnout. So although secondary traumatic stress is not PTSD and it is not burnout, it is conceptually congruent with compassion fatigue. In 1995, Dr. Charles Figley, who is a leader in secondary traumatic stress and compassion fatigue research, originally argued that secondary traumatic stress is a natural consequence of working with traumatized people, but when left unattended, it can lead to secondary traumatic stress disorder, which is also recognized as compassion fatigue. While the terminology has evolved over time, secondary traumatic stress is still recognized as a phenomenon resulting from secondary exposure to trauma. The term compassion fatigue is favored for helping professions like nurses and healthcare professionals, whereas secondary traumatic stress is used across diverse populations. Um, and that would include populations like police officers, firefighters, um, other types of frontline workers. But despite this distinction, secondary traumatic stress and compassion fatigue relate to the same collection of negative responses to patient trauma, with compassion fatigue referring to secondary traumatic stress disorder. Most of the literature on secondary traumatic stress simply discusses its prevalence and effects. Since it is still an evolving concept with a lack of conceptual congruence across the literature, there are multiple instruments used to measure secondary traumatic stress in research. Using different instruments to measure this concept can result in inconsistent and inaccurate measurements of secondary traumatic stress. It is crucial that researchers examine the concept of secondary traumatic stress to ensure that they are actually measuring secondary traumatic stress rather than one of its related concepts like PTSD. When patient safety and healthcare professionals' mental capacities are, are at risk, the phenomenon of concern must be better understood with an objective singular form of measurement. Therefore, the purpose of this inquiry was to review the state of measurement of secondary traumatic stress in healthcare professionals and determine what, what is the best instrument for measuring secondary traumatic stress in nurses. Sorry about that interruption. If you've had to Zoom with me recently, you know that it is nearly impossible for me to get through a Zoom without my dog bringing his chew toy in here and making lots of noise in the background. Okay, for theoretical underpinnings, the theory of secondary traumatic stress and the compassion fatigue resilience model, both, both created by Drs. Ludic and Dr. Figley, to support the inquiry of how to best measure secondary traumatic stress. Drs. Ludic and Figley laid the groundwork for their compassion fatigue resilience model by providing the following on this slide, the following nine theoretical assertions, which concur with insight found throughout the literature on secondary traumatic stress. Of all of these nine theoretical assertions, I think the very first one is the most encompassing of secondary traumatic stress, which states that it is a highly complex and often unavoidable, unavoidable experience when working with the suffering or those who study them through or through records of traumatic experiences. Ooh, it's not working, sorry. Okay. In their effort to learn more about compassion fatigue resilience, Drs. Ludic and Figley created the, this compassion fatigue resilience model that you see on the slide. In the model, the authors examine what leads to secondary traumatic stress in order to learn what the prerequisites are to compassion fatigue resilience. 
The compassion fatigue resilience model is designed to measure the level of resilience to secondary traumatic stress. It is also a framework for understanding both positive and negative effects that result from this secondary traumatic stress process. By identifying the mechanisms by which secondary traumatic stress is experienced, it can be better understood. Remember that the questions uh, guiding this inquiry were, what instruments are used to measure secondary traumatic stress in healthcare professionals? And what instrument is best suited to measure secondary traumatic stress in nurses? To, to learn the answers to those questions, I performed a literature review between July to August, 2020, um, using the databases CNAL, PubMed, and the Cochrane Database of Systematic Reviews, searching the terms secondary traumatic stress and measurement. Without any limiters or time range, the search resulted in 11 articles in CNAL, one of which was a duplicate, 702 articles in PubMed, and four articles in the Cochrane Database. To focus the results, the limiters of English language and full text availability were applied. This resulted in five articles in CNAL, 250 articles in, 259 articles in PubMed, and four articles in the Cochrane Database. Determining which articles were appropriate for inclusion was based on the inclusion and exclusion criteria listed on this slide. Articles were included for review if they were written in the English language as I did not have um, access to a translator. If they attempted to measure the variable of secondary traumatic stress through any form of an objective measuring instrument, and if they included the term secondary traumatic stress in the article's title or abstract. Articles were excluded from use if they examine post-traumatic stress or post-traumatic stress disorder, which differs from secondary traumatic stress. Articles were also excluded if they used an instrument for me measuring a different variable. For example, many articles received, retrieved in literature search use the professional quality of life scale or the ProQual to measure burnout, which is one aspect of the ProQual, but did not address secondary traumatic stress. Additional exclusion criteria consisted of examination of secondary traumatic stress in populations other than healthcare professionals, like police officers, firefighters, social workers, and articles that discussed secondary traumatic stress but did not measure or attempt to measure it in any way. Data for the review were retrieved from the literature search and reviewed to, to determine the aim of each study and how secondary traumatic stress was measured in each study. Of all, the nine, of all the results, nine articles were appropriate for inclusion in the review. From the nine articles that the literature search revealed, there were four instruments used to measure secondary traumatic stress, which are listed on this slide. The German version of the questionnaire for secondary traumatization by Greenacre and colleagues, two questions from the Freeburg PTSD screening by Bach and colleagues, the professional quality of life scale or the ProQual, and the secondary traumatic stress scale. Psychometric properties were analyzed for each of the instruments, except the two question scale from the Freeburg PTSD screening, since psychometric properties were not in existence for that instrument that I could find. The next slide contains the PRISMA 2009 inclusion and exclusion criteria flow diagram. Okay, the first instrument, the German version of the questionnaire for secondary traumatization. It defines secondary traumatization as a condition caused by repeated or extreme confrontation with details of traumatic situations without any direct sensory experience impressions as the victim's symptoms are transferred to one transferred to another individual, excuse me. The questionnaire contains 31 questions addressing the symptoms of intrusion, avoidance and arousal, hyperarousal, parapsychotic sense of threat and PTSD comorbidities. The questionnaire yields scores ranging from 31 to 155 with higher levels, higher scores representing more severe levels of secondary traumatic stress or secondary traumatization, traumatization excuse me. Greenacre and colleagues did not develop the instrument nor provide its psychometric properties in their article, but I found another article by Whitecamp and colleagues that discuss its psychometric properties. In 2014, Whitecamp and colleagues examined the structure of the questionnaire for secondary traumatization using factor analyses, cluster analyses, and reliability analyses. Factor analyses yielded a six-factor structure with only a small number of items loading on differing factors. Cluster analyses suggested a single-scale structure of the questionnaire, 
Findings supported that the questionnaire was a reliable screening instrument for acute and lifetime secondary traumatization, but that verification of the six-factor structure with confirmatory factor analysis was recommended by the authors. However, testing of this instrument would need to be verified with the intended population of use. Greenacre and colleagues used the instrument to explore secondary traumatization, psychological stress, and resilience in 75 personnel volunteers of emergency psychosocial care. Participants completed questionnaires to assess their levels of secondary traumatization with this scale, with this questionnaire, levels of primary traumatization with the post-traumatic stress diagnostic scale or the PDS, and comorbid psychological, comorbid psychological stress with the patient health questionnaire, the PHQ-9, the GAD-7, the Generalized Anxiety Disorder Scale 7, and the Short Form Survey 12. The authors found that the levels of, uh, the participants' levels of secondary and primary traumatization were below cu cutoff scores, and their levels of comorbid psychological stress were comparable to representative norm samples indicating lower levels of traumatization and stress, which is desirable. Bach and colleagues in 2020 examined the frequency of reported secondary traumatic events, secondary traumatic stress, and its possible consequences for psychological well-being and workability in 320 nurses as, as part of a hospital's legally required psychological risk assessment. Symptoms of depression and anxiety were assessed using the, the two item PHQ, the PHQ-2, and the GAD-2, the Generalized Anxiety Disorder Scale with two questions. Secondary traumatic stress was assessed using a, question, using a questionnaire with two questions from the Freeburg PTSD screening, which ask, have you experienced traumatic events at work? Yes or no. And do you currently suffer from flashbacks regarding um, the traumatic events at work, either yes or no. Based only on answers to these two questions, Bach and colleagues classified participants into three distinct groups, which you see on the slide. If no traumatic event, if no traumatic work event was reported, subjects were classified as the no secondary traumatic events group. If a traumatic event at work was reported without flashbacks, subjects were classified as experience of secondary traumatic as experience of secondary traumatic event without secondary traumatic stress. And if flashbacks were affirmed in the context of this tra traumatic experience, subjects were classified into the secondary traumatic event with secondary traumatic stress group. Approximately 91% of the nurses reported secondary traumatic events of whom 25% reported that these events lead to continuous rumination and or flashbacks. Based only on these two questions alone, the researchers concluded that the results demonstrated high rates of self-reported secondary traumatic experiences in nurses of different professions. Despite an extensive search, um, psychometric properties for the Freeburg PTSD screening instrument could not be found. The ProQual scale is designed to measure a professional helper's professional quality of life. Helpers can be found in healthcare professionals, social service workers, teachers, attorneys, police workers, firefighters, clergy, airline and other transportation staff, disaster site cleanup crews, and others who offer assistance at the time of the event or later. Dr. Stam asserts that the professional quality of life incorporates two aspects, compassion satisfaction, which is the positive aspect of caring for others, and compassion fatigue, which is the negative aspect of caring for others. Compassion fatigue breaks down into two parts, burnout and secondary traumatic stress. Dr. Stam identifies secondary traumatic stress as in the ProQual as a negative feeling driven by fear and work-related trauma. Psychometric properties are well established for the ProQual's original intended population of caring professionals. Reliability measures have been reported by Dr. Stam listed on the slide there with compassion, satisfaction, burnout, and secondary traumatic stress all having alpha scale reliabilities greater than or equal to 0.75. The three scales of the ProQual measure separate constructs with the compassion fatigue scale being distinct. The intra-scale correlations show a 2% shared variance with secondary traumatic stress and a 5% shared variance with burnout. 
Although there is some shared variance between burnout and secondary traumatic stress at about 34%, Dr. Sam argues that these two scales measure different constructs with the shared variance likely reflect, reflecting that distress is common to both conditions. Search findings did reveal that the ProQual was used in two different studies to measure secondary traumatic stress. Exesa and colleagues performed a randomized controlled trial on Australian physicians in training to measure secondary traumatic stress, but their sample was very small at only 46 participants. Kobayashi and colleagues performed a correlational study using the ProQual with almost 600 mental health nurses in Japan. The secondary traumatic stress scale. This scale was created as a self-report measure for assessing secondary trauma symptoms by Bride and colleagues in 2004 with 287 social workers with a master's degree in a Southeastern state. The secondary traumatic stress scale yielded strong validity and rigor for this sample. The scale was developed after three rounds of administering the instruments and making adjustments as needed. The coefficient alpha was greater than 0.8 for the scale and its subscales, which are intrusion, avoidance, and arousal, indicating instrument reliability. Convergent validity was also, uh, a convergent validity among the subscales was also supported. The factor loadings were statistically significant and of sufficient size supporting the factor structure of the scale. The secondary traumatic stress scale has been used in various studies to measure secondary traumatic stress. And I've listed on the slide there, the studies that I found it used in. Um, health, and, health and Human Services Professionals, um, that study by CSLEC was a randomized controlled trial. Physiatrists treating trauma patients, midwives in Switzerland, mental health nurses in Cyprus, and then 329 healthcare providers, social workers, and human service professionals. The last four studies listed on that slide were all correlational, non-experimental studies. The search strategy revealed four instruments for the use of measuring secondary traumatic stress. The first instrument, the Questionnaire for Secondary Traumatization, is a reliable screening instrument for acute and lifetime secondary traumatization, but Whitecamp and colleagues found that the six-factor structure needs to be verified with confirmatory factor analyses. Additionally, the reliability and structure of the, of the questionnaire are based only on the one Whitecamp and colleagues study. This review revealed one study that used this instrument to measure secondary traumatization. Given the lack of common use of this instrument and the need for further factor verification, the questionnaire for secondary traumatization should not be used to measure secondary trauma traumatic stress in healthcare professionals without further development and testing. With the study by Bach, I was unable to find any additional uses of the Freeberg PTSD screening instrument. Bach and colleagues used only two questions from the screening instrument to establish rates of secondary traumatic stress in over 300 nurses, which provided questionable results. Given the lack of any additional uses or validation of this instrument, the, ev the evidence does not support its use, to, its use of the instrument in measuring secondary traumatic stress. Although the ProQual was originally intended to measure a helper's professional quality of life, everything that incorporates in a professional helper's quality of life, the ProQual is still used to measure secondary traumatic stress, although there are differing perspectives among researchers on the terminology difference among burnout, secondary traumatic stress, and compassion fatigue. But remember the way that Dr. Sam's defi Dr. Stam defines secondary traumatic, traumatic stress a negative feeling driven by fear and work-related trauma. This definition is inconsistent with most other definitions of secondary traumatic stress. Secondary traumatic stress is generally understood to represent the negative effects of working with patients or clients who are experiencing trauma and suffering, which is not reflected in Dr. Stam's definition of the concept. I believe that secondary traumatic stress is different than other related concepts like burnout or PTSD, but since they each refer to different syndromes or phenomena, I believe that since they are different concepts, they should be measured differently. The ProQual is appropriate to use when assessing an overall professional's quality of life and caregivers. However, it does not support the measurement of secondary traumatic stress. Lastly, the secondary traumatic stress scale was the most frequently used instrument in this literature review to measure secondary traumatic stress. 
According to Dr. Cheryl Titano Beck, the secondary traumatic stress scale is the only single concept scale specific to caregivers' experiences of trauma. The reliability of the scale and its subscales, along with convergent validity observed among the subscales, provide desirable qualities of an instrument. However, the lack, the lack of psychometric testing among healthcare providers is noteworthy. The developers of the scale, Broad and colleagues, argue that it will be important to examine the ability of the scale to discriminate between persons experiencing secondary traumatic stress and persons experiencing related constructs like depression, burnout, and traumatic stress reactions resulting from direct exposure to trauma. They also recommended psychometric testing of the instrument with the sample before basing any practice decisions on study results. I believe that the, that the secondary traumatic stress scale is the most appropriate instrument for measuring secondary traumatic stress in healthcare professionals, but this conclusion needs to be further verified with additional research and testing of psychometric properties with the population of interest, which for me is nurses. If you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email, jberay at cumberland.edu. Here are my references. I'd be happy to send any of those if you'd like those. Thank you very much and I hope y'all have a great day.